Joining me right now is Jeremiah Reef Miller, Chief Investment Officer at 213 Strategic Partners. Thank you for being here. So how do you Thanks, feel? Andy. We just finished talking to one guest who saw a couple of cuts coming, in fact, even thinking 50 basis point cuts, perhaps. Um, where do you stand on this market that's been hovering around highs? Uh, I'll, I'll disagree with, with cuts coming. I think the market has been over overly optimistic since the beginning of the year. I know inflation is, is ticking down, but if, core inflation in particular. But when you look at uh, just CPI overall, food, include food and energy, those are the inflation numbers that the consumer is feeling. Uh, and those have been relatively flat. That CPI has been in that three to three and a half range for a while. And I think it's going to take a lot more work for the Fed to get inflation down below that three and a half, three percent level, if that's where they really want to get. Now, is is two percent the right target for inflation? That, that's a question mark. But getting from six to four is easy. Getting from four to two, uh, I think, is going to be a lot more difficult. And I, I think the Fed's going to have to sit here a little bit longer because generally I think at an economic level the economy is doing pretty good in the U.S. right now. Yeah, you were noting, I mean, it takes time to get down to that 2% inflation target. They didn't see it so fast either. I mean, they were looking at out a couple of years as well. I mean, one of your sector picks would be real estate, which I want to get to, and I wonder where the inflation and or rate story fits in there. Yeah, so real estate's been interesting, in particular the last year and a half. I, investors got really nervous about real estate as rates went up, uh, and rightfully so if you're in the wrong properties, too, coming out of COVID, if you have a big office portfolio, I mean, that's something <clears throat> that you have to worry about. But generally, if you're in multifamily, for example, I mean, that's that's it, home prices going up, mortgage rates going up, people were staying in their apartments. Uh, and and those owners of apartment complexes are going to have pricing power over that, and you get some you get some tailwinds in your income there. So you have an embedded inflation hedge when you're in the right real estate and the right locations. And I think that's key. Multifamily uh, is one of the the areas that we like. And if you're in the the right towns, right with with increasing population and an influx of labor force, and there's jobs available. Those areas of the market of real estate are where you want to be, and you're gonna you're gonna be able to generate a decent amount of income right now, uh, and have that sort of embedded inflation hedge. And if you're in the private markets, your your volatility profile in real estate as well is is lower than being in the in the public markets. You know, and you were noting when you went back in time to the '80s and high inflation and all that, you noted how long it took right to get back down to reality tell me a little bit about that story that caught your eye yeah obviously it was interesting it caught my attention because uh, you go back to the 80s and obviously the economy was very different back in the 80s but in inflation was rampant and to get from six percent down to where they were the, the sort of three four percent took years and and the fed funds rate was still like eight eight and a half percent it never got anywhere close to where the fed funds rate is now so they were really having to struggle and fight inflation with a very high Fed funds rate for a very long time. And inflation didn't actually get to 2% until we were closer to the late 90s and 2000s. So that gets to, is the 2% target really where we need to be? Again, if you look at the economy, real GDP growth the last few quarters has, has been around 3%, which is usually where you want to want to be. And that's real GDP, right? So we've already beat inflation and we're getting growth. So I think there's there's this dynamic in the economy that's being a little underappreciated, the fact that, that companies have already adjusted and adapted to a degree to higher inflation, higher Fed funds rate, and you're still seeing very strong earnings. That, that's, how, that's the proof in the pudding right there is strong earnings and improving margins is why markets are moving higher. Yeah. And, you know, um, when you talk about real estate, there's so many ways to do this. I mean, there's individual stocks and REITs and um, there's ETFs. There's so many ways. I know you noted within real estate, um, multifamily, for example, is strong. How would you go about trying to get in and, and invest in some of the real estate picks or ideas that you have? We tend to move uh, or have our real estate exposure more in the private markets where there's less price volatility and, and the pricing there is more more of a mark to market rather than a speculative trade. Uh, on, the pub on the public side, that's a way to play it, but 
those portfolios, you don't always know what you're getting. You have to be very careful on the public side, and you can get pricing that's uh, relative to the NAV that's sometimes at a premium or at a discount, and that can create a lot of noise in your portfolio. Real estate for us is a core position for clients' portfolios long-term to help generate income and to reduce volatility. So it makes sense to us to go into the private markets where we know we're going to have a long runway and we can hold that position and, and generate that income. And we have that growth and that hedge in there as well as it relates to inflation. And, you know, I know you're watching GDP closely. You talked about fixed income in the bond market. You didn't really see a lot of screaming opportunities there. Feel free to share if there's something on your mind. But the big picture is it sounds like you think that the market, the economy seem to be in this slow and steady pace that is just fine. Yeah, I, I, you always have to sort of separate the two. Right? The, the economy is, is sort of grinding along, chugging along. And then the market always forward looking, right? I think the market is really optimistic about rate cuts uh, and and where prices might need to be right now. So if you look from an earnings expectation and multiples expectation, I think like the S&P 500 is a little rich right now, multiples a little over 20. If you look at just earnings growth expectations year over year, the market's looking for a 10% return in the S&P 500. Well, that 10% return is where we are now. So I think the equity markets right now are trading in sort of a 10 to 15% range, and we're probably closer to the higher end of that range over the six to nine months. Again, unless earnings growth pushes those expectations higher, uh, I think the markets right now are a little rich. Uh, but I'm not, I think you still allocate to equity markets with cash, but maybe don't lean in all at once right now. Understood. Jeremiah Reith Miller, 213 Strategic Partners. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it.